Hi, I'm Sim and this is my Winter Warmers series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a classic pulled pork. Now, up until fairly recently, I had only ever eaten pulled pork in a restaurant. And thanks to my friend Adam, I can now make it at home. I had been around to his house not so long ago and he had made it. And I was really, really impressed. And thankfully, he's given me the recipe to show you. So what you'll need to do first is add some onions to a pan. I've sliced them up relatively finely, but they don't need to be so small that they're going to disintegrate because it's going to be cooked for quite a long time. So I've put some oil in here first, now added the onions, and you just want to soften them, you don't want them to brown at all. And you'll just need to do this for a while until they're nice and soft and translucent. The onions are nice and translucent now, so it's time to take them out of the pan before we move on to our next step. So if you just have a bowl nearby, you can pop them in there. While your pan is still hot, you can keep it on the heat and you're going to put some pork shoulder in. Now it's a really nice way to use pork shoulder because it's not a particularly expensive cut of meat but it's going to taste great once we're finished with it. If you put it in skin side down, turn the heat up a bit and you're just going to want to brown it off. It doesn't need to cook in the pan at all because we're going to be cooking it in an oven for a while. So just leave it on the stove for a while, keep turning it, make sure it's brown all over before we move on to the next step. Once the meat is brown on all sides, you'll need to add the onions back into the pan. And then you just need to add in two tins of chopped tomatoes. 250 mils of red wine. A few shakes of Tabasco. You'll then need about a tablespoonful of fennel seeds. A few sprigs of thyme. And also some oregano. Season with salt and pepper. Give it a good stir, pop the lid on, and then it needs to go in the oven. 165 for about three hours. Every hour, check the meat and turn it over to make sure that it's cooking evenly. The pork's out of the oven now, and you can see it's all brown and looking lovely. The first thing you'll need to do is just take the string off with a sharp knife, if you can get into it. Mind your fingers, because it'll still be really hot. Pull it all off because you don't want it ending up in your brioche buns. And the next thing you need to do is just cut off the fat from around the pork. Just get a sharp knife to do it and it should come away pretty easily. Once you've taken the fat and the string off, you just need to shred it for quite a long time. If you like the recipe and you'd like to see more in the series, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And also be sure to leave your comments as well. I always like to know what you're getting up to with the recipes. And you can be quite rough with this. You want it shredded quite finely. And it's great because it can go with brioche buns, which is how I'm going to serve them. You could also add this to a pasta dish or a rice dish. There are so many things you can do with it. And it's really good if you're catering for people with food allergies as well. It's a naturally gluten-free thing. It's also dairy-free, so it just depends what accompaniment you want to put with it. That's it. That's pretty much as shredded as it needs to be. Now, I've got some brioche buns here. Like I said, you can serve it with anything you like. I also really like to have it with barbecue sauce. Now, it's just a case of pouring a little bit on and then adding some bits of pork to it, like so. And this is great. You can serve it up at parties. It's really good if you're having a cocktail party as well because you can just hold on to it really easily. It's a small little parcel and it's absolutely delicious. I hope you've really enjoyed this recipe. I certainly have. And we're going to go away and enjoy these now.